Father in heaven, thank you so much, Father, for this opportunity that you give us to come before you at this time. I pray, Father, that you would please bless our, our minds and our hearts, Father, as we read through this very important book. Please be with each and every one of us, those that will be joining. I pray for them, Lord, whatever it, whatever it is that they might be going through at this time. And um, anyone else going through any trials, any anything, Lord, that might be in their in their path that might be difficult to them, Lord, I pray that you would please be with them. And please forgive us our sins. Help us to repent. Help us to turn from our sins completely. Help us to love Thee with all our hearts and all our minds. And Lord, thank You for the week. Thank You for blessing us and being with us throughout the week and keeping us safe. And we pray, Lord, that You would continue to bless these readings be with me as I read and help me to pronounce the words correctly, help me to convey my thoughts and the thoughts that are written by those that were that by those that were able to come together at that time, the able Bible students that uh, prayed and search the scriptures as never before in regards to the prophecies of Daniel and the Revelation. And so, Father, please be with us. And, and we ask for your presence above all things. And help us to enter upon your Sabbath day with clean, clean hearts and clean minds. We ask that you would transform us and make us into the image of your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ. In his name we do pray. Amen. Thank you for joining us and we are looking forward to another reading. And uh, there is something that came to my mind that I want to share with everyone before we begin our reading. As most of you know, we're living in a time when there are many winds of doctrine being shared or they usually when that saying is brought up many winds of doctrine are blowing here and here and there and so i i will make you aware that there are certain teachings um that are um in regards to prophecy that is that are being shared in such a way that um, that do away with that which our pioneers have uh, have been able to publish in their books and um, but just recently I did run into something that I think it would be very important to bring to your attention and that is um, I'm not sure if you ever heard this term but double applications of prophecy have been running rampant in these last days and um, I'll have you know that there are persons applying prophecies in a new light so-called new light um, and they're modern modernized I guess you can say and so they don't they don't do away with the pioneer view um, completely they say well yeah that was true back then but now we have new prophecy we have a new interpretation and um, 
that in it of itself is very dangerous as well and these are just my thoughts on it and I ask the viewers to please do your research don't let these winds blow you in, in the wrong direction um, where you will be without anchor um, and so here, here's my thoughts on that to apply certain prophecies with a double, double interpretation would be the same as to get the 2300 days and say well yeah that was a you know back then 1844 that was applied and now let's let's bring it to our day and so let's modernize it let's and you see the bible gives us certain rules about how we're supposed to interpret the bible um, that's why peter says that it's not a private interpretation in other words it's not what i think it is it's what the bible tells us what it is and so we should always allow the bible to interpret itself and we by doing that we were kept from going into um false interpretations and so as we go in through these prophecies we're looking at history we're looking at um, what the Bible reveals about itself um, history is just as much as the Bible as um, as the Bible itself they, it, they correlate they come together they're actually one and the same thing uh, history and prophecy doth agree and so the Bible does let us know that after it, these prophetic periods um, were to come to pass, as we will see in the book of Revelation, after 1844, October 22nd, there is not to be any more time prophecies. And so that stops anyone from trying to reinterpret the prophecies that we're studying, the prophecies about the 2300 days all of these prophecies these time prophecies cannot be reapplied in the future and so that being said the same goes for any other prophecies there's rules that if we follow there there can only be one interpretation for those things now there's other things if we look at um, the biblical rules of interpretation that the Bible gives us, um, you could actually look these up uh, in my timeline. They're probably <laughs> so far back. Uh, but if you look up uh, this hashtag, um, uh, Bible Rules, I believe it is, Bible Rules, you can find... Um, some publications that I did here on Facebook and uh, even some videos about those rules and you can look at them and and study them uh, these are the rules that the Bible gives us in order for us to not be led astray and not to go on to private interpretations and so that being said I'm just throwing this out there so that way you're aware uh, because many will get the will receive these truths from our pioneers and then um, say that the modern interpretation is also correct and that can't be that's that's um, that doesn't make any sense it's either one is correct or one is incorrect and uh, that reminds me a lot of what happened with Elijah uh, the people were trying to um, live a double life. They were trying to um, worship uh, this false system of worship, which is paganism, and also at the same time believe that, you know, in, in some respects, in, in the true God, that's... Um, 
an abomination. The Bible lets us know that we're not supposed to do those things. And so, that being said, there's only one interpretation for these prophecies. Um, unless the Bible indicates that there should be another application. And I'm sure we will run into some of those things as time passes. Um, some, certain figures, certain symbols might have more than one interpretation and that's perfectly fine. But in regards to those things that were um, literally fulfilled in Bible prophecy, that has become light for us um, as we find out what those things actually represent in a literal form. And so with that being said, I just wanted to share that with you. Hopefully that was beneficial to you some way, somehow. Um, and so that way you're aware of the things that are being uh, being shared today, even within Adventism. Um, I, I felt it necessary to share that with you. So let us get into our reading now in Daniel chapter 9 and we're actually getting into the very last comments um, by Uriah in regards to the 2300 days the 70 weeks because these are actually um, part of the same prophecy okay so here we go. A word respecting the date of the 7th of Artaxerxes, when the decree for restoring Jerusalem was given to Ezra, and the array of evidence on this point is complete. Was the 7th of Artaxerxes BC 457? For all those who can appreciate the force of facts, the following testimony will be sufficient here. The Bible gives the data for a complete system of chrono chronology extending from the creation to the birth of Cyrus, a clearly ascertained date. From this period downward, we have the undisputed canon of Ptolemy and the undoubted era of Nebuchadnezzar extending below our vulgar era. At the point where inspired chronology leaves us, this canon of undoubted accuracy commences, and thus the whole arc is spanned. It is by the canon of Ptolemy that the great prophetical period of 70 weeks is fixed. This canon places the 70 year of Artaxerxes in the year BC 457 and the accuracy of this canon is demonstrated by the concurrent agreement of more than 20 eclipses. This date we cannot change from BC 457 without first demonstrating the inaccuracy of Ptolemy's canon. To do this it would be necessary to show that the large number of eclipses by which its accuracy has been repeatedly demonstrated have not been correctly computed and such a result would unsettle every chronolog chronological date and leave the settlement of epochs and the adjustment of eras entirely at the mercy of every dreamer so that chronology would be no more value than mere guesswork. As the 70 weeks must terminate in AD 34 unless the 7th of Artaxerxes is wrongly fixed and as the, that cannot be changed without some evidence to the effect we inquire. What evidence marked the termination? The time when the apostles turned to the Gentiles harmonizes with that date better than any other than other which has been named and the crucifixion in AD 31 in the midst of the week 
or of the last week is sustained by a mass of testimony which cannot be is easily invalidated. From the facts above set forth, we see that reckoning the 70 weeks from the decree given to Ezra in the 7th of Artaxerxes, B.C. 457, there is the most perfect harmony throughout. The important and definite events of the manifestation of the Messiah at his baptism, the commencement of his public ministry, the crucifixion, and the turning away from the Jews to the Gentiles with the proclamation of the new covenant all come in in their exact place and like a birthright excuse me and like a bright galaxy of blazing orbs of light cluster around to set their seal to the prophecy and make it sure it is thus evident that the decree to Ezra in the seventh of Artaxerxes BC 457 is the point from which to date the 70 weeks that was the going forth of the de of the decree in the sense of the prophecy the two previous decrees were preparatory and preliminary to this and indeed they are regarded by Ezra as parts of it the three being taken as one great whole for in Ezra 614 we read and they built it and finished it according to the commandment of the God of Israel and according to the commandment of Cyrus and Darius and Artaxerxes king of Persia it will be noticed that the decrees of these three kings are spoken of as one the commandment margin decree singular number of Cyrus and Darius and Artaxerxes showing that they are all reckoned as a unit the different decrees being but the success successive steps by which the work was accomplished and this decree could not be said to have gone forth as intended by the prophecy till the last permission which the prophecy required was embodied in the decree and clothed with the authority of the empire this point was reached in the grant given to Ezra but not before here the decree assumed the proportions and covered the ground demanded by the prophecy and from this point its going forth must be dated with the 70 weeks we are now done but there remain a longer period and other important events to be considered the 70 weeks are but the first 490 years of the 2,300 days. Take 490 from 2,300 days and there remain 1,810. The 490 as when we, when we have seen ended in the autumn of AD 34. If to this date we now add the remaining 1810 years we shall have the termination of the whole period thus to AD 34 autumn add 1810 and we have the autumn of AD 1844 this speedily and surely do we find the termination of the 2300 days when once the 70 weeks have been located one other point should here be noticed. We have seen that the 70 weeks are the first 490 days of the 2300. That these days are prophetic signifying literal years according to the Bible rule, a day for a year, Numbers 1434 and Ezekiel 46, as is proved by the fulfillment of the 70 weeks. And as all reliable expositors agree, that they commenced in 457 BC and ended in AD 1844 provided the number is right and 2300 is the correct reading with this point established there would seem to be no room for further controversy on this point 
Dr. Hale's remarks, there is no number in the Bible whose geniusness is better ascertained than that of the 2,300 days. It is found in all the printed Hebrew editions, in all the MSS of Kennecott and De Rose's collations, and in all the ancient versions except the Vatican copy of the Septuagint, which literal errors in excess, excuse me, which reads 2400, followed by Symmachus, and some copies noticed by Jerome, 2200, both evidently literal errors in excess and e defect, which compensate each other and confirm the mean 2300. The query may here arise how the days can be extended to the autumn of 1844 if they commence 457 BC. As it requires only 1843 years in addition to the 457 to make the whole number of the 2300, attention to one fact will clear this point of all difficulty. And that is that the that it takes 457 full years before Christ and 1,843 full years after to make 2,300. So that if the period commenced with the very first day of 457, it would not terminate till the very last day of 1843. Now, it will be evident to all that if any portion of the year 457 had passed away before the 2300 days commenced just so much of the year 1844 must pass away before they would end we therefore inquire at what point in the year 1857 or excuse me in the year 457 are we to commence to reckon from the fact that the first 49 years were allotted to the building of the street and wall we learn that the period is to be dated not from the starting of Ezra from Babylon but from the actual commencement of the work at Jerusalem which it is not probable could be earlier than the seventh month autumn of 457 as he did not arrive at Jerusalem till the fifth month of that year Ezra 7 9 the whole period would therefore extend to the seventh month autumn Jewish time of 1844 those who oppose this view of the prophetic periods have been wont in years past to meet with meet us with this objection the 2300 days have not ended because that the time has passed and the Lord has not come. Why the time passed in 1844 without the cons consummation of our hopes? We acknowledge to be a mystery, but the passing of the time is proof that the 2,300 days have not ended. And we shall pause right there and we will see how the book will answer to that statement that was given at that time and uh, we shall see how this prophetic period the 2300 days without any um, dispute was actually fulfilled in October 22nd of 1844 and so stay tuned for that and let's go ahead and end with a word of prayer father in heaven thank you so much father for this time that you have given us to read through this book history and prophecy doth agree O oh father and we thank you for the 
history that was recorded. Thank you for your word that lets us know of these things, for it as well contains the very history of the world and things that would transpire in the future as well. Father, as we read these things, we ask that you would please strengthen our hope and our faith. That we would know, Lord, that you uh, will not allow your word to go void, but you would send it to go forth and that it would accomplish your will. We ask and we also give you permission to do your will in our lives that we can be ambassadors for you and watchmen on the wall. That we would watch not only for our own souls, but for the souls of others. That we would love you with all our hearts and all our minds. And that we would love our neighbors as ourselves. And so, Father, continue to be with us. Uh, we ask that your blessing would attend as we continue to read and also as we go on to enter enter excuse me to enter into the sabbath please help us to keep your sabbath day holy and we ask for a special blessing upon that time as we enter therein please be with each and every one that has been watching and those that will join and watch this video later on bless us with your presence dear father and help us dear father to share these things with those that are in need that are starving to know these prophecies that are found in daniel and the revelation we ask all of these things in the wonderful name of your only begotten son jesus christ amen